What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Mentality Unchained. I'm your host, Kevin Thomas, the therapist. And this is Jalil, the producer slash co-host. What's going on, everybody? Look, this is uh, our show, Mentality Unchained, and I got a special guest here this, uh, t- uh, this evening, and her name is Ashley Flanagan. She's actually uh, my co-worker, and I will say she's a, definitely a friend. And uh, she's a smart cookie, man. I'm telling you, she know her stuff. But one of the things that I wanted to talk to Ashley about uh, is some of the population, the people that she's actually seeing in her office. You know, I talked about people in my office quite a bit, but uh, she's going to shed a little light on that. But let me tell you a little bit about her. Uh, She goes by she, her, hers. And she studied psychology and Spanish at Florida State. University, graduated with an MA in clinical psychology, sports and health uh, specialization from Adler University. She uh, has worked with community resources such as the the HAND, CCCOC, NISRA, and One Love. She is an LGBTQ plus affirming therapist, certified ally with 50 plus hours of training and culturally, uh, currently training for cognitive processing therapy for trauma certification. Please give her a hand clap for joining Mentality Unchained this yeah. evening. I like her I face. Like try hard. <laughs> like her face. I feel like a try hard. I feel like a try hard. What? <laughs> her face when you was reading everything. Oh, she's just. I know, alive. right? <laughs> yeah, she forgot she had all those certification and. Well, I didn't know you were gonna read it out loud. If you're reading oh. something out loud, I've been like, like, why would it make you read all those letters? That's so oh, nah. mean. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Good thing. You just be glad that I didn't ask you to tell me what all of those are, but I won't do that for the sake of the show. Okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> some of them are like applicable, but gotcha. yeah, I mean, you don't know what one love is. Yeah, I do know what one love is. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. No, awesome. but uh, the other letters is a lot. C, 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 C. No, but yo, uh, <laughs> thank you for joining us, Ashley. Uh, and I call her Ash and mm-hmm. we, we are great colleagues. And like I said, she's uh, real, really close to me and I appreciate her knowledge. I appreciate our professionalism. And I just really wanted to have her on the show to discuss some important topics, I think. And, but before we get into it, I'm gonna let her tell a little bit about herself other than her, her uh, educational credentials. Let her give her a little personal uh, um, spill of who she is, and we'll get right into it after that. Okay. Ashley. Yeah. Thanks. Um, great introduction. Again, sorry for all the letters. Um, but I am a therapist, uh, like Evan said, and with him. And something that you know, what I've noticed with my own clientele, but also like in a personal life, is just how relevant you know interracial dating and LGBTQ has been talked about, especially like together. Um, and how they've just been discussed in different places. And especially because I've lived in different places of the US, like from the South to the North, um, Midwest even is a little different too. And just how everybody's talking about those things. And I think part of the reason why I was really excited about coming on to this podcast is because I feel like my circle sometimes is, you know, very, you know, we were all very knowledgeable. We're all very aware about things. And so I feel like I'm not always in touch with like how other people are seeing or viewing things until I read about them on the news. And I'm like, what the hell? People still are dealing with this. So here we are. Well, thank you. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you for joining us. And, and, you know, everybody that listens to the show knows it's about culture. And Mm -hmm. what we don't realize is that culture encompasses gender, it encompasses race, it encompasses environment, encompasses all of those things. And so tonight we wanted to talk about interracial dating and then the LGBTQ uh, population and how it's actually integrated within the last, I will say 15, 20 years into society. And now they're looking for a voice, they're looking for a platform. And so, uh, and for me being a heterosexual male, sometimes I may miss it. And, and sometimes I may not be able to speak to that, uh, what that person is actually dealing with. And I know as a therapist, I do have a few on my caseload, but I don't deal in depth with what is actually going on. So that was one of the reasons why I wanted to bring Ashley on here, because she deals with that population extensively. 
And uh, so she knows uh, pretty much what goes on. So if we want to label her the professional at this point on the show, that's exactly what she is because she she's pretty knowledgeable about that. And so I mean, in comparison to you. <laughs> so I wanted to really uh, bring that to the forefront. So let's let's kick this thing off by just telling us how did you get into uh doing therapy with more uh, with with that type of population with the interracial uh population the lgbtq population yeah i mean as i guess like coming out like i am part of the lgbtq population so i identify as bisexual and poly so there those are like two kind of like stigmatized labels even within the community so i feel like i've had a lot of discussions about that like it's one thing to be gay, but like sometimes even being bi is seen as like not okay. Mm -hmm. um, like, why don't you just go be pan or something like that? So there's a lot of like questions, a lot of, you know, even judgment that we receive in our own community about those things. Um, and also part of like why I wanted to bring up like interracial dating is because like personally, like what I've experienced and also, you know, professionally, and just the different ways in which people talk about it. Like um, I've lived in the South, I live in the North and like I've lived all over and how we communicate questions or like why are some things even still a question? Um, but those are real. So like when I'm with a client, like we sometimes have to go through like how many layers of oppression do you fucking have? Like, mm -hmm. are you a woman? Are you any type of like BIPOC? Do you also, are you gay? Like. Mm -hmm. what's going on and then all of a sudden you have like eight layers of just the things that they have to deal with on a regular basis um and do you, the, yeah do you think that's part of the depression is that uh having to work through those layers or trying to uh um identify or uh to other people of hey i'm this i'm that and then i have to explain it you know so oh yeah yeah I mean, even like we have the different ways of even talking about it. Like if you are disclosing, it's different than coming out. So if you are going to a doctor's office and you are um, a trans person, then you are having to disclose to the doctor that like what you're going to see underneath this gown is not what's going to be on my identifier. And that's a disclosure. It's not necessarily coming out, but they have those conversations all the time, especially if you're like at schools, right? Like, don't use my dead name. Like, how do I tell you what my real name is and have you respect it and have you use it in the classroom without coming out to the whole population of the school? And it's, it can be really mentally exhausting. Um, even like having conversations with my own family, they're like, you know, when are you gonna find a guy? And I'm like, well, <laughs> fun fact, uh, it can be anybody really at this point. Um, that then it's like just a constant like reminder and just another reminder that like you're kind of different than what everybody is expecting of you and that was, can be hard was it was it hard for you um, as a therapist or educated uh, lady to um, come out per se uh, like just really go ahead and identify yourself as poly by was that a difficult thing for you it was I waited until I was the 28 to do it. Um, and it's something that I talk with a lot of people who, you know, on like different levels and sometimes in a really general way to kind of hide my own questions underneath it. Mm -hmm. Um, and a certain part, I start feeling less authentic as a therapist when I'm working with, you know, my clients who are brave as hell to come out and talk about things all the time. And here I am and I haven't come out yet. And that was a huge thing for me. Um, so I felt really, I felt less authentic the more that I was working and not telling people about who I was. Wow. You guys have to know who Ashley is for her to say she felt less authentic. <laughs> so I, I can appreciate that, that, that answer. Ash. So, but yeah, big ups for, for doing that. And I, I will say, and, and in all honesty, is that as African American men and, mm -hmm. and just the culture in general, that wasn't something that we, you know, we we accepted, you know, to be honest with you. And mm -hmm. so to see right now how so many African Americans are actually embracing it and coming out, uh, I think, you know, uh, for them, it's authentic for them. And it's all, also a way of saying, hey, I've been this way for a long time and now I feel free to do that and so 
it, it, it's, it's just like, you know, for me, uh, I don't shun it. I don't disagree with it uh, in terms of what that person wants to do with their with them with their lives. Uh, and so I, that's why I choose to counsel those as well, because hmm. at the end of the day, we're all people. Right. And we have to look out for one another. And the way all this hate is going on in the media and, and also in our cities, in our communities, it has to stop. 